Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Salati Wa Salam Ashraf Al Mursaleen Sayyidina Wa Mawlana Muhammad Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bimada Lakum Al Nazar Kum Sidi Ya Rasul Kareem Fa'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ali Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah Ati Ya Rasul Wa Ulul Amri Minku And always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajeez or Da'if or Miskeen or Zan or Jahan but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see the another blessed Jummah and the real Jummah always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And every amal that we do on this earth is an imitated amal and we pray that Allah to present all our amal to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that if Prophet is happy with the amal, alhamdulillah that he purify it and present it to Allah And that if he's not happy with the amal that he intercede for it and then purify and present it to Allah Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see this holy month. And uh, tonight for the question and answers or if there's any questions. We have a Timeless Reality is out which is a two and a half years of questions and answers for, for tafakkur and meditation, contemplation with the table of contents, everything and everyone can go to Amazon uh, uh, worldwide. If it's coming out like uh, already in Los Angeles or America then it comes and rolls out towards Canada, then UK and and different parts of uh, Amazon worldwide. If you can take that link on Amazon in your area and post that link of where the book link is. If you post that onto Facebook and promote that and promote it onto different social media platforms, Telegram, Instagram, wherever we can with two, three hundred people and then thousands of people sort of listening to this on rebroadcast and playing later that if they take the Timeless Reality, the link on Amazon and repost that into different media platforms, alhamdulillah becomes a big blessing to spread that da'wah and that that work of ours. All these books are a lifetime work that for the last 25-27 years of the website Nur Muhammad and all that's been compiled into it and all the talks that have been sort of transcribed and put into articles and transcribed through videos and alhamdulillah all these books are coming from all that like a, a well of realities, uh, books on haqqaiqs of Hajj, haqqaiqs of Surat al-Yaseen and the khuruf and numbers, uh, haqqaiqs of the knowledge of the heart and reality and the layers and levels of the heart, knowledges of energy and reality of energies and Divinely energy how to connect to energy and then alhamdulillah all the realities of tafakkur and contemplation which is the foundation for wilayat that anyone trying to reach towards saintly realities, divinely lights and the heavenly realm of malakut, its foundation is based on tafakkur. And without understanding the tafakkur, without under understanding meditation and contemplation and how to annihilate oneself, efface oneself, how to ask for a power higher than ourselves to come and to dress us and bless us, without all of that then very difficult to reach anywhere, especially because the ability to call in a, po a more positive energy than ourself is a reality in which to have an accounting. That we said the people of truth that Allah's ayatul kareem qulja al-haqq, the say, O Janab al-haqq that when the truth comes falsehood perishes. And falsehood by its nature is zahukan, is perishing, means nothing false stands before God. Has it the time and then it begin to disintegrate and when the truth comes moving towards it, it obliterates every falsehood. So the falsehood we have built within ourselves of who we are, 
what we think we are, what our purpose is, all of that is filled with degrees of falsehood. And as soon as we contemplate and call upon ourself, our reality and calling upon powers that are higher than ourselves, the madad and the support is asking for those whom God has given that support to come to support us. Somebody sent a story of meditation. <clears throat> These are new age people that they don't believe in connecting to anything but how something good can go something very bad, very quick. That they were a people who meditate, meditate, meditate but not for any particular purpose. And they were sitting and meditating until one day they realized a very dark force is coming towards them. And I would assume they're probably of a good nature for them to experience and understand what a bad force would be. But they realize as they're just meditating to relax, to breathe and all of a sudden they felt a, a, an a immense negativity and a fear. They could sense with their soul something very bad was starting to come around them. And immediately they stopped all their meditation, all their practices and the story came to us from someone else who's trying to learn the Islamic and Sufi perspective. That what happens and why did that happen that they started to get possessed, something was trying to possess them. And what's different? The whole system is different. So we've said many times before that if you imagine a very dangerous sort of area where all thieves and drug addicts and crooks and you just get in your car and say, go down somewhere, down the street and you have no particular coordinates and no particular direction. Anyone driving in a car and headed out to nowhere particular, the likelihood of you ending up in somewhere very dangerous and getting hurt very bad is, is very simple. So that exists within dunya. If you don't know where you're going and you just keep driving recklessly into different areas, there are areas in Los Angeles and in Vancouver you turn the wrong place and you're in a, in a dangerous place and a dangerous group of people could surround you. No difference for spirituality, more even dangerous. Anytime you're trying to connect with spiritual energy and you don't give a very specific coordinates to Allah and to your soul and to what your intention is, it got to be completely insane to sit and say, I'm going to just open myself to whatever forces are out there. When all our teaching is telling you that there's an abundance, if there are 100 evil forces there's one good. So the, the overwhelming percentage is like 99% negativity around insan and they never open themselves without a specific purpose. And that's why the Islamic and the, the Sufi teaching which is the tasqiyat al-nafs, the way of purification of the nafs, tasawwuf. So all of this is existing in the depth and the soul of Islam. Islam without tariqah is like a hollow shell. Islam the tariqah comes, Sufism comes, tasawwuf comes, it's the soul, it's the world of malakut and the knowledge of malakut. Islam is merely the body and within its Islam is the soul and that's why then becomes the teachings of Iman and Maqam al ihsan those are all from tasawwuf. Someone who's not in tasawwuf can't teach one word about Iman. If you watch their videos which I don't re recommend because you get headaches and feel sick, if they're not from Ahl tasawwuf, Ahl dhikr and they try to describe faith, they think they have faith because they merely accepted Islam and that now they prayed Ramadan a few years, they, they do their namaz, they do their salah and they say, yeah we have faith. Well Allah clearly defined in Qur'an to the Arabi who came to Prophet said, we believe and Allah says, no you're, you're wrong. Tell them they merely accepted you but Iman has not yet come into their heart. 
and iman doesn't come into the heart until Allah tests them like He tested people before, nations before with your life, with your money, with your wealth, with your possessions, with, with your family, with everything Allah will test you to see if you have faith and that with patience and perseverance that you have istiqam and firmness and you continue. Then Sayyidina Muhammad came to give the secret because they fought, they gave the jihad, they gave the zakat, they did all their salah, they did all their Ramadan and Prophet described to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and holy companions, we have a big jihad. Go and get everything, whatever you want to give, give to us. We have to now prepare ourselves, buy everything that we need for our struggle, let's prepare. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq came and brought his entire existence, his entire possession into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And Prophet described and asked Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq that, what, what did you leave for your family? This is everything. He said, I left them, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And then Hazrat Umar came and brought a large amount of the fortune of his wealth and possessions and Prophet described as a learning for us because holy companions you can't even understand their station. This is after all their Ramadan, after all their fasting, after all of their giving. Prophet described for the teaching, Ya Umar that you have to love me more than you love yourself. Because they were always astonished at what makes and distinguishes Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq from all those companions. What was the love that Prophet had, what was this the, the friendship that was there and he was using that ex example to see how much his love and the completion of his faith, the, the perfection of his faith that he give his whole existence and wujud for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and for us an immense learning that faith is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. So means that these people don't have faith just because they pray and they understood Ramadan for a few years. It's just they accepted the body of the reality which is called Islam. Islam is your body. If I meet your body there's no way that a person can come and say, I know who you are just because two times they saw you on the street somewhere. Your, your reality and who you are is somebody who knows your soul and knows the depth of your reality of what you are. That's why they don't speak in depth, they speak very superficial and the same, same speaking each time. So that's only a description of Islam. So the iman is that when we did all of the actions that Prophet brought and the immensity of the love grew in which the love for Sayyidina Muhammad begins to, to go beyond the love and the thought of ourself. And this is what all are striving for in tasawwuf and tazkiyatul nafs and the ways of purification because they're going into the soul and the depth and the reality of Islam. That's why for them when they speak Islam is an immense ocean because they're pulling out from the body of Islam all the realities of faith. How can anyone talk about faith when faith is, is light? Faith is not something tangible. Islam is tangible because it's a body, right? You can find out zakat by calculating on a calculator, that's very tangible, you can even give a percentage. You can read the laws and those are tangible, you read the law it says, do this, don't do that, do this, do that, don't do that. But when you get into the world of light these are no longer something you can touch. This is only based on what you can feel. And that's the reality of iman, that's why the people of iman they can speak to the realities of iman. They can bring out from the realities and the knowledges of light and that is the knowledge of the souls where Allah created everything from light. Light is the truth, 
every falsehood and every form is based on falsehood. It has a time in which it manifests and then Allah describes zahukan. So it means our, our form even when we're pure in our form in Allah's presence your form is false. It's not who you are, it's merely a, a dunya manifestation for it. And that's why Allah then described one ayatul kareem that says the haqq comes and falsehood will perish. Means when the time of your soul comes to bring its reality out, as it brings its reality out it begins to destroy zahuq unto the form and that's why then death was granted to insan. That Allah want the truth to come out of everyone so He created the grave. As soon as they enter the grave means all the falsehood ends and zahuqa means it begins to obliterate every falsehood until what's left in the grave is the truth of what they brought with them and the truth of their soul and their reality. And then Allah described, blessed are those whom purified it, that they brought their light out, they brought its realities and, and its eternal reality out and that's tasawwuf. And then within the depth of that reality again like the pearl within the, the secret of that light is maqam al-ihsan and that's why we say the pearl, lulu. So Islam is your body, Iman is your soul. Within the depth of your soul is a hidden pearl within your heart, lulu. Lulu wal marjan. So within the heart of that soul, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim Qaddasullah would describe the pearls and corals because the soul is like an ocean from divinely lights. And Allah has hidden within that ocean of realities pearls and corals. And that's why the people of Maqam al Ihsan they can find their reality in Surat al Rahman. The Surat al Rahman has all of these people of Maqam al Ihsan, their arwa and the secret of their arwa is in Surat al Rahman. And these Ibad al Rahman are governed by Surat al Rahman. And that's why the surah is based on adab and manners. When Allah says, How many of my favors are you going to deny? It's a surah of, of, of tasawwuf and, and uh, immense adab because Allah is, is emphasizing that for Allah whom has not a character that we can understand but is imp his stressing the importance of khuluq and character. Because Allah is not a being like what we could understand but Allah in this is describing the khuluq and the character. For Allah to say that, when I gave you a date and you're denying my favour, I gave you this and you're denying my favour. Allah is calling and stressing the importance of adab. So again Surat al-Rahman is a description of all the houses of tasawwuf, all the turuqs they are under sifat al-Rahman and they are governed and dressed by Surat al-Rahman and all their arwa and their souls have a reality within Surat al-Rahman. And, and the rubies, the pearls and the corals are all ayahs that describe these precious jewels that if everyone else is charcoal, these souls to Allah whom Allah granted faith and then from faith granted the immense, immense reality of Maqam al ihsan and dunya they consider it and don't even understand it, they can't even phantom the depth of the reality of what Allah has given because everyone thinks they're there. But others are like charcoal and their life on this dunya is like charcoal and charcoal in the end has no value and is gone. 
But when Allah grant the people to have iman and faith, real iman according to Allah according to Sayyidina Muhammad all these teaching for all these years is to describe. When we say according to Allah how do you know what is according to Allah By saying what is according to Sayyidina Muhammad So when Prophet is describing for Allah's faith is you have to love me more than you love yourself. That is pearls and corals, those are the treasures of Allah's oceans of rahmah for Surat al-Rahman. And then how precious those, those treasures are then describes the maqam al-ihsan. Those whom Allah granted their souls of an ancient reality to be from maqam al-ihsan, they are the treasures of the Divinely Kingdom. They are the pearls, the diamonds, the rubies of Allah which are like on the Taj of Sayyidina Muhammad And from those treasures they illuminate this dunya and they illuminate all the realities of this dunya. And by means of those treasures all the blessings and fires and all of this Divinely grace Allah shines upon the earth and blesses the inhabitants of this earth. So alhamdulillah that Allah gave these realities and our life's pursuit is in search of these realities. Ya Rabbi we don't want to be charcoal, we're asking to leave just only the understandings, we want to go into the depth in the ocean of faith. And the faith is, is a, the world of light and the studying of the world of light and the only way to leave the body and enter the world of the soul and enter the world of faith is through the tafakkur, the contemplation, meditation in which we sit, we lower the desire, lower the importance of the self and enter into these realities. And as a result the tasawwuf way and the Sufi way is that you have to be very specific that, Ya Rabbi I'm asking to reach to these realities, I'm asking to reach to the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then I'm asking for my madad and my shaykhs to be present with me at all my practices. That's why I said don't add this and don't add that, don't bring raiki, don't bring any garbage into this very purified like gold from the Divinely Presence. Throw out the garbage, throw out everything else. As soon as you bring in garbage and contaminate the purity of this way it becomes something different. So the purity of this way is that when we sit to make a tafakkur we ask for the madad. Why? So that when the shaykhs are present with us the devils are running. If you don't do the madad then again you're opening yourself up to what you can't see and what you have no understanding about. That's why we recite the madad and then you recite the madad from the app and ask for the madad of the shaykhs having the taweez and then asking, Ya Rabbi then I'm asking to open my heart, I'm up to, to reach to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Wa kunu ma sadiqeen that Allah's order was have a God consciousness and keep the way of the truthful servants. So the whole process is, is meant to be a safety and the way in which to reach towards realities. The danger is when people try to sort of take a little bit of this and that and, and make it into some sort of soup and then, and then other people say, oh this is, the, this is, this is a meditation, no. The Islamic meditation and Sufi meditation is very disciplined and has a very specific way of practicing. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from its realities, its fruits and its bounty in which to reach to all of these haqqaiqs and to reach towards all of these uh, blessings inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hormati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.